realize how tough it is to practice medicine for whatever reason. I found that it was constricting me because people were telling me what to do who didn't have the same education that I did and yet they had to fill out a little form and they were telling me, no, you can't do that genetic test or no, you can't do this. And then for the last four years, Medicare and all the insurance companies have been paying me less. And so I have actually been looking for something else. And I know that none of you doctors in the room ever do this. And so you're all very much on top of it. And you're looking for something. And what I found was Pharmanex after I'd been with four other um, multi-level marketing companies. And what made Pharmanex different was uh, really probably is Joe and Michael Chang because it's the science, it's the innovation, it's all of the other stuff that's different from everything else. Uh, I've never seen a company like it uh, with 125 staff scientists, all of these affiliations, all of these different places that the science comes from and the people that they work with, the success quality for all of the uh, supplements that they use is so different and so remarkable. Uh, that it makes it all better. Um, the scanner, though, is really what got me into the, the business. Initially, uh, I was presented with what Vitality had done to help uh, someone, uh, very believable, not a salesman. We'll talk about that again in just a minute. Um, and she told me what Vitality had done for her, and I looked it up on the internet, and I found the scanner, and I realized that Every single thing that the scanner tells you is what I've been telling people in my blog and how to prevent breast cancer, mm -hmm. except for writing a prescription for Evista and Tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. Because whether it's exercise, eating better, the right supplements, sleeping the right amount of time, doing whatever, it's all registered in the scanner. The scanner was um, actually invented in the University of Utah by Dr. Bernard Gellerman. Uh, he was first looking at the um, antioxidants in the retina. Uh, he looked at specimens first and then was looking at human retinas and found out that zeaxanthin and lutein leave early in people who get macular degeneration. And that is how he came upon it. He continues to do studies with that today. <clears throat> His particular instrument, which was great big, and I'll show some other pictures of that in a minute, <clears throat> excuse me, was purchased by uh, uh, Pharmanex, and the patent is there for 20 years. Uh, it's a validated, non-invasive uh, antioxidant measurement that we can make. We'll talk about the other ways that uh, we can do that, um, and you can see the one I have here. This is all based on a very interesting physical uh, principle. There, uh, Sir C.B. Raman uh, traveled on the Mediterranean in the 1920s. And he asked his mother why the Mediterranean was so blue. Mm -hmm. And she said it's because of the reflection of the sky. And like most children, we doubt what our mother tells us. <laughs> and in his case, he went back and started studying that, and he realized there was science to it. And it really isn't reflection of that, but that certain particles throughout nature are able to change the vibration of the light sli slightly and make it look different. Specifically, what we've narrowed down here is into the antioxidants, which are those long uh, compounds that are represented here. The antioxidants that are the most interesting and the ones that we use the most and are the most beneficial are 40 carbon chains, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, and on either end, things are different. And they actually are pigments, and they are what give plants deep and intense colors. So they're more in a red bell pepper than a green, more in charred and the deeply colored greens, greens than in the lettuce. And what happens is that a 473 nanometer light, it actually is about 465 to 490, is changed to 510 or a little bit more green. Every time it hits that, it changes the vibration. And what is so neat about this instrument is that it is able to send out the 473 nanometer uh, vibra of lights, and then filter out everything else and come back with the number of photons that you have. The, the first scanner uh, was a 16.5 uh, pound scanner. 
The first one that I had was 11 pounds, and I couldn't, I was so excited to get it, but it came in a box about this big, and I thought, ooh, that's kind of big. And here it is, it's heavy, and it has, uh, you know, the computer attached to it. And then finally, I asked for the next one. I even when I was at the convention where you all helped me out so much, and I asked for it, I said, no, no, it's on back order, it's on back order, you know, whatever. And so finally, when I had done in, uh, by Christmas time, and I started in November, I'd done 124 scans, mm -hmm. and Bree said, just call up there and tell them you've scanned so many, they need to send you one. And so I did, and they sent me the, uh, the S3, uh, which is so fantastic, as you all know. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize, I just assumed I would do it, but I take it with me on trips. And you can scan anywhere, the Mary make fun of me. Can you scan on the airplane? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can scan, you can scan on the plane all the time. In Love Field, anywhere. The first time I took it, I called up there and I said, now, I'm going to take this on a trip. Is this, is this okay? Oh, sure, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. With and so Please. when I went through the first TSA, I had my little brochure out. I was ready to turn it on and show them how it worked, but it just went right through. Yeah, the Carrying scans has scanned somebody on every yeah. flight. Yeah, that's just well, amazing. No. I mean, this is my, this is my personal item. 